Hello everyone, Materium here with another narrative battle. This one has the Ogre Kingdoms versus the Dark Elves in a 2,000 point battle line scenario. Torga Blackstew sat in her yurt, staring into her cauldron. She had filled it with a thin layer of Noblar bones. As she stared at the bones, she felt the dark whispers in her mind begin to blot out the sound of the Great Maw, and the bones began to shake. Torga! The voice of Chog, the tribe's slaughtermaster, broke her reverie. What are you doing with that empty cauldron, girl? Torga averted her eyes. Nothing, slaughtermaster. Chog narrowed his eyes. Torga was certainly hiding something, but he did not yet know what it was. You've been doing too much nothing these days, girl. The Great Maw is angered at the lack of offerings you've brought him. I'm sorry, slaughtermaster. Sorry will not feed the maw, girl, nor will it fill the tribe's belly. Gather some bulls and go into the hills. Kill whatever you find, and pray that whatever it is, the maw is pleased with it. Yes, slaughtermaster, I will leave at once. As Chog left, Torga giggled to herself. She had been looking for a chance to experiment with this new magic, and Chog had unwittingly given it to her. She would indeed go hunting but it would be with the new dark whispers upon her lips, instead of prayers to the Maw. And so, in what appears to be a rather open area, the hunting group of the White Tooth Clan manages to stumble upon some Dark Elves moving through the area. Uh, here is our uh, battlefield. Both the lake in the top corner and the marshy thing on the right are both swamps of the... Uh, the water one is a mist wreath swamp, and the actual marsh is the Camarian quicksand. So I didn't want anything to do with that Camarian quicksand, so I deployed everything on this side kind of in a denied flank position, and the Dark Elves answered to that. So uh, I think we're going to do a lot of fighting in this big open area between the house and the, the water there. So, starting with the Dark Elf deployment, uh, next to the water there, he has five Dark Riders uh, with just a musician. Hanging out with them is a Sorceress on a Dark Steed, level 2 to the Lore of Shadow. She has a Dispel Scroll. Behind that is a uh, Reaper Bolt Thrower. Next to those guys is a unit of five Doomfire Warlocks. Back there uh, in the fence is his uh, Supreme Sorceress, uh, Talenda, I think her name is, uh, on a Dark Pegasus. She has the Shrieking Blade, the Tome of Furion, Talisman of Protection, and is a level 4 to the lore of Dark Magic. On the other side of the fence there, he has his second uh, Reaper Bolt Thrower. And the uh, Supreme Sorceress is serving as his general. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Uh, that large block of troops next to the Reaper Bolt Thrower is 33 Black Art Corsairs with full command and the standard of discipline. Uh, the chariot next to that is actually his master BSB on a Cold One chariot with the cloak of, cloak of Twilight. Next to that is a unit of nine Cold One Knights with full command and the Banner of Swiftness. And then vanguarded up here, hiding behind the building and the swamp, is his second unit of uh, Doomfire Warlocks. So my opponent has a lot of uh, fast cav and tricks. Uh, my list is decidedly less tricky. Uh, vanguarded up there on the side, I have a unit of six Saber Tusks. And with them is my hunter, Vaparak Far Wanderer. He has the Sword of Anti-Heroes and the Gambler's Armor. Um, mainly, I'm just... I was expecting kind of some bunker action, so I was just going to run him in and just slam into any bunkers I could find. Uh, next, in the back line, is a unit of ten Noblar uh, Trappers with Musician and Standard Bear. Then I have a unit of sixteen Ogre Bulls with Musician and uh, Standard Bear. A, oh no, sorry, that is full command. With them is Torga Blackstew on the corner there, my slaughter, level 4 to the lore of undeath. 
She has Grut's Sickle, the Talisman of Preservation, and the Rock Eye. There's also a Butcher to pay for my Maw Tax, a uh, level 1 to the Great Maw, with the Dispel Scroll. And I happen to get really lucky there, and she has Troll Guts. Then on this side, I have a second unit of 10 Noblars with Musician and Standard Bearer. Uh, they are also Noblar Trappers. Behind them is a unit of uh, five Lead Belchers. And wow, I just realized going over this that I totally forgot to put my Thunder Tusk on the board. I played this game down by 250 points to start. Don't... Okay, so the Dark Elves get the first turn, and my opponent is very cautious here. He just kind of spreads out so that his Reaper Bolt Throwers can get some shots on things, uh, and those Doomfire Warlocks have plenty of targets upon which to cast. He did want to move his Dark Riders with the character behind the water so that if I do come at him, I'm going to have to take dangerous Excuse me, gonna have to take dangerous terrain going through that uh, mystery swamp. And again, everything on this side cautiously is starting to come up. Um, my opponent very rightly fears giving me an easy charge with that ogre horde. Um, though I don't think he realizes its true purpose, which is just to provide bodies to sacrifice for Grut Sickle so that I can summon up a bunch of nasty undead. Um, but. We'll see if his caution pays off. And then over here, his Supreme Sorceress rightly fears the killing potential of the Hunter and his unit. So she moves over here so she can get a good line of fire. Uh, his hope is that he gets a good magic phase and can just blow that Hunter's unit off the board um, before he can become too much of a problem. So during his magic phase, he got... Uh, Several tried to get several spells off, but I countered most of them. Uh, the only thing I didn't counter was he got Miasma off on the Hunter's unit, lowered their movement by one. Uh, so we go into my turn one, and I charge the Hunter and his cats at the Dark Riders, and they chose to stand and shoot with their hand crossbows and put a single wound on the Saber Tusk. And then, because of the Miasma, I failed the charge, so... Uh, that was definitely good for my opponent. Um, kind of sucks for me, because now I've got this unit out in the middle of nowhere, and he's going to have at least another turn to try and thin it down and, and get to the actual character. And everything else, uh, I move up. Uh, it looks like I'm being very cautious here, but I've got some good charge arcs with that horde. But what I'm really trying to do is get Torga so that the the 12-inch bubble she can summon is behind those Dark Riders, and I do. Um, so now I can put, if I can get some summons off, I can put some undead in very advantageous places, get them behind that line, and uh, deal with those bolt throwers, because, uh, yeah, they, they kind of make me nervous, and I want them to go away. So during my magic phase, I get two spells off. Um... And this is actually after the shooting phase, because I forgot to take a picture. But I miscast both the character summoning spell and the signature spell for monstrous cow or monstrous infantry. So I get one uh Cairn Wraith you see there, and three uh Crypt Horrors. And the miscast does some damage. I think I kill one of the ogre bulls and inflicts two wounds on Torga. Um, I did very, very well in getting the less destructive uh, effects. But uh, Torga's just taken it in the face. Apparently she's not quite ready to handle the uh, necromantic energies yet. But she's still there. She's just a little beaten up. Um, and now I've got a pretty strong force here right in the middle. Uh, then my lead belchers ended up just putting a hurt on those Doomfire Warlocks, and you can see only one of them's left, and he uh, panicked and is fleeing right now. And this is just a better picture of where that Doomfire Warlock ended up fleeing to uh, after he panicked. So Dark Elf turn 2 uh, starts off with the Corsairs charging into the front of the Crypt Horrors. Um, 
I'm not sure how I feel about this. Uh, I think the Corsairs will eventually chew their way through these Cryptors, but it's going to take them a while. Um, and that's good for me, frankly. The longer these free points can tie up uh, his actual combat units, the better off I think I'm going to be. And the Doomfire Warlock here fared to rally because he need double ones, uh, even though he was within the range of the BSB and flees off the table. Over on this side, the Doomfire Warlocks shoot the gap between the building and the swamp and end up over here in my flank to cause some trouble. And then over here, his knights and the BSB position themselves, so it's going to be hard for me to get in there with my horde. And if I go into the side of the Corsairs with the Horde, they'll be able to countercharge. So uh, definitely a little bit of a defensive plan, but not a terrible one. And next thing he does, you have to look a little close to see it, but he moves his Supreme Sorceress behind that block of uh, Corsairs so that he can try and Magic Missile my Cairn Wraith. Other thing he does is he moves the level 2 of Shadow on the horse out of the Dark Rider unit and puts them behind that fence. Now what he doesn't realize this does is it gives me, if the, the Cairn Wraith survives, it gives me an absolutely perfect charge into that mage who isn't going to be able to afford to, to flee because she's too close to the edge of the board. So uh, I'm definitely going to put off going after that reaper bolt thrower for a minute and and try and get some tasty tasty mage points and again i forgot to do some some pictures uh and this one's a little blurry so sorry about that so in the the only magic i held him down his shooting i think he did a one wound or so to the ogre unit um with his reaper bolt thrower and failed to kill the cairn wraith with any magic so we went into combat uh the Crypt Horrors just did a beating on the Corsairs, and they took a couple wounds, so it was actually static combat res that ended up popping the other guy. So one of them's dead, the other one has two wounds on it. Um, but again, it's making him waste time and points to capture no points just to free this unit up, so it's still a win. So in my turn two, again, I, th I think I need to check the focus on this camera but I charge the hunter and his unit into the dark riders they stand and shoot and kill off two more of the saber tusks you can also see in the corner there my crypt or my uh, Cairn Wraith charges into his mage and he sees the trap that I set for him so he has to stay and and, take. and here is an equally blurry picture of the Cairn Wraith slamming into that mage there and here's a picture of the rest of my movement. It does look like that Reaper Bolt Thrower actually did a good amount of damage to my ogres last turn. As you can see, three of them are missing. Uh, but I end up swift reforming with the Lead Belchers to, to shoot the Dark uh, Warlocks, which is good. I'm frankly a little surprised I made it since I don't have a BSB in this army. I get no rerolls. But then I move up my... Uh, Noblar Trappers very aggressively right in the face of those knights. Uh, I know my opponent is afraid of Noblar Trappers, so maybe this will hold them off until I can uh, get myself into the position I want. The other Noblar Trappers are moving up here so that when the Crypt Horrors are killed, the Corsairs are going to have to run into them. So that's kind of my aim there. So during Magic Phase, I really don't have much to go with. I, I rolled relatively low and my opponent stopped me. So we go into shooting, and the Lead Belchers here kill three of the Doomfire Warlocks. I just got a ridiculous number of shots off with them. Uh, but the remaining two do not panic, so they're still there. Then over here, my Cairn Wraith uh, ends up... I think I only do one wound, but with the wound and the charge, uh, the wizard ends up breaking and running off the board. I restrain and turn so that I can see his Supreme Sorceress and the other Reaper Bolt Thrower that's behind the Supreme Sorcerer. And naturally, I my hunter and his catch just blow through the Dark Riders, end up overrunning into the Repeater Bolt Thrower with an Ogre Charge, so they're just going to totally destroy that machine next turn. And over here, more Corsairs die, more free Crypt Horrors die, uh, but I'm still standing there, so this is two full combat rounds that I've managed to hold up the Corsairs, which is one of his, his bigger 
uh, block, combat blocks. So again, total win to the Lord of Undeath here. So Dark Elf turn three. Uh, my opponent actually backs up here a little bit, and I'm not entirely sure why. I think maybe he was uh, going to try and, and maneuver around me, but uh, it, it doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense since I'm going to just continue putting pressure on him with, with those chaff. Uh, again, it's just my, my opponent has an unreasonable fear of the dangerous terrain test that the Noblar Trappers make, so I think I'm using more of that fear than any effective units to, to keep him bottled up on this side. And here my opponent moves his uh, Supreme Sorceress out of line of charge from the Cairn Wraith, which is frankly what I was expecting anyway. Uh, he positions her back here to get a shot off at the Cairn at the Cairn Wraith, which I think was a huge mistake, because I'm going to kill the Bolt Thrower with the Hunter this turn and be able to reform and come slamming into him at the start of my next turn. So that, that was definitely not a, a great choice by my opponent. So my opponent ends up getting some buff spell off on the Corsairs. I don't remember what it was. Or maybe it was a debuff on the on the Cairn Wraith, but I end up stopping his magic missiles, so he can't do any damage to the Cairn Wraith. Uh, but we go into combat. As you can see, obviously the Hunter just crushes the uh, Bolt Thrower, and <laughs> the poor Corsairs fluff against the Crypt Horror. I do a few wounds, so it ends up meaning that with static combat res, I only lose by two. So I crumble by two, and the Crypt Horror is holding on for yet another round. So that's three full combat rounds that he's wasting dealing with zero points. And here's just a better shot of the non-existent bolt thrower and how I reformed. So now I can see either the flank of that uh, Corsair unit or his Supreme Sorcerer once I get my Cairn Wraith out of the way. So here is all my movement for turn three. You can see Cairn Wraith slams into the other Reaper bolt thrower. Hunter and his group slam into the flank of the uh, Pegasus riding Supreme Sorceress. Uh, I reform my ogres into kind of this wider brick so I can get a little bit more maneuverability through here. And again, aggressively move up the Noblar Trappers to just choke up everything. And I uh, reform the Lead Belchers because he ended up, on his last turn, he fled and his Doomfire Warlocks are hiding behind the building now. So I want to get everybody facing in the right direction and uh, keep things moving. Hopefully I'll get a good magic phase, be able to summon up some more help, and uh, kind of go in for the kill. So, then I attempt to summon a character summoning spell, burn all of my uh, undead points that I've had on it, and miscast. And my miscast is a 2. So you can see right behind the Noblars there, I get a Banshee. Uh, but I end up doing significant damage to the unit, and sucking Torga Black Stew into the warp. So, uh, she is on her way to see the Chaos Gods, and I'm out my level 4. Uh, I'm just hoping that what I've managed to summon so far will be enough. Uh, I'm definitely thinking that Banshee, uh, with her scream, she's within 8 inches of the knights there. Hopefully thin them down a little bit, uh, but I definitely don't think it was worth my level 4, who was also serving as my general, so... Um, that makes, for those of you keeping track, of five spells I tried to cast this game, I miscast on three of them. So we go into combat here, and I make the mistake of not challenging with my hunter, and the Supreme Sorceress and the Pegasus manage to do enough wounds uh, to the cats so that we end up just bouncing off each other. Uh, I inflicted two wounds on her, she inflicted two wounds on the cat, or no, I guess she only lost by one then. Um, but I just didn't get enough through because she's got a four up ward save. Uh, so she manages not only to stick, despite the, the difference in the combat res, but managed to roll her leadership and reform to the front. Um, next turn I know to, to go ahead and charge, so I'm, or to challenge rather, so I think I'll still be okay, but it was just one of those, like, stupid moments that I, I, I was regretting as soon as I let it play out. And in the rest of the turn, the Banshee did not succeed in killing any of the knights. The Cairn Wraith 
absolutely fails to destroy the Reaper Bolt Thrower, and the Corsairs manage to kill the last of the Crypt Horrors. So, things are definitely not looking my way <laughs> at this point. Um, sad to say, all of my hopes now rest on Noblar Trappers, <laughs> which is a very, very precarious position to be in. And in the top of Dark Elf Turd 4, my little green buddies do not disappoint. <laughs> um, he charges the Cold One Knights into the Noblar Trappers. I stand and shoot, and kill two of the nine would stand and shoot, because he fails uh, uh, his, what, two up? Or one up? It can't be one up. But anyway, he fails his armor save against strength two shooting. Then slams into the front of them, and proceeds to fail four dangerous terrain tests. So the Noblar, the ten-man Noblar Trapper unit that's worth fifty points, just killed nine Cold One Knights before they even got into combat. And I'm I'm rolling because the Noblars just they they never cease to to amaze me with their ability to just brutalize shit they have no business brutalizing. <laughs> um, but understandably, my uh, opponent is having a little less amusement with this than I am, but uh, I, I really could not have asked any, any more from them. And to make it worse, this turn his BSB is stupid, so he just kind of stumbles forward a, a, an inch, I think. However, the Corsairs manage to get their charge and have just enough space because of the way I, I moved up after that re swift reform here, to wheel out of the way and connect into the ogres here. Um, so without... I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm still thinking my ogres can probably handle this, but it's not as open and shut as I might like it to be. And here you see where the uh, BSB on the Cold One Chariot stumbles forward a little bit, and the... Uh, Doomfire Warlocks end up just kind of threading the needle there and moving around to this point. So in combat, we finally see what we were supposed to see out of those knights. Uh, they kill half of the Noblars. I'm still stubborn because I've got a full rank, but it's stubborn leadership five, and they run. But the freaking Cold One knights fail to catch them, so they turn around and end up here where you see them. And up here, I finally do challenge with the hunter, Vaprok, and he obviously very easily takes out the last remaining wound on the Supreme Sorceress, and we turn to face the battle uh, that's in the center of the table. So during combat, he ends up getting six wounds with the Corsairs on my ogres, who have a five-up armor save, because they've got light armor and the iron fist. And what you see here, sitting on my paper, are the six armor saves that I made. Succeeded every one of them with five sixes and a five. <laughs> um, so at this point, I think my opponent is realizing that Kane is not with him. Um, and I end up just brutalizing the Corsair unit. I think I kill half of them or so. And yeah, here's a better picture of that just pile of dead. I think he's got... I have a couple ranks left, but uh, it, it was just ridiculous how many of the armor saves I just went, no, you're, you're not getting any attacks through, and uh, makes my opponent a little sad. So we go into uh, Ogre turn four, I guess. Uh, at the end of last turn, I reformed to take those two guys who weren't touching anything and just put them in the back, um, and end up slamming my iron or my lead belchers into the flank of the Corsairs just to go ahead and break them, slam the hunter and his unit into the doom fires to break them, and my Noblars rallied, so they turned around to cause more trouble for those knights as well. Um, and over here, uh, the... Okay, I guess this is after co the first combat, because I didn't really cast anything. Or no, I did, I got... <laughs> yeah, I got troll guts up on the big ogre horde or the big ogre group. So, uh, Hunter ends up doing killing one of the Doom Fires, the other one breaks and runs off here. And so, after the big combat here, these ogres just do a ridiculous number of wounds on the uh, Corsairs. I think there's ten, ten or so of them left. Uh, and they break and run. 
And they go through so many of my units that I think they were taking four sets of dangerous terrain tests and panicking some people. Uh, nobody panicked, but in the four sets of dangerous terrain that he had to take for running through units, uh, nine of the ten remaining Corsairs died. So he's only got one guy left there from that Corsair unit, um, and he's like three, four inches from the edge of the board. And this is where my opponent chooses to call the game, because he's really got nothing left on the board that's that's even going to come close to putting a scratch in what I've got left. Um, so I, I can't really doubt him there. So the bitch is the ogre's dinner? Sinbane muttered to the last remaining warlock from Telendra's raiding force as he walked around the half-empty camp. Good. That is one less problem to deal with. Reinforcements arrive within the day. See to it that you are ready to leave as soon as possible. The warlock bowed and headed away from the dreadlord. Sinbane watched him go and proceeded to the Kraken Lord's tent. As he was about to enter, he heard whispering. Our dreadlord seems almost happy that the sorceress failed in her mission, a female voice said. Sinbane recognized it as Valaris, one of Talandra's closest hags. He wants the glory of the mountain campaign for himself, Lokir Felhart stated. It doesn't matter to me as long as I am well paid. Then your coffers will be overflowing soon, then, slave master, the hag continued. Myself and my sisters have now joined this campaign. Sinbane can have the glory. I simply want the head of the Keeper of Secrets hanging in my mistress's bedroom. Cain demands it and we shall obey. Sinbane shook his head and thought to himself, Did my life just get easier? Or much more complicated? With that, he opened the flap. So, wow, pretty decisive victory for the Ogre Kingdoms. Um, and, and it... It, <laughs> it kind of blows my mind that it was this sort of one-sided, um, and, and I think it shows a certain amount of the power of the, the lore of Undeath, that I was able to basically short myself 200 points by not putting my, or 250 points by not putting my Thunder Tusk on the board, and then still ended up doing as well as I did with just a few minor spells cast. Um, like I said in uh, the the narrations and lamentations shows, I really think that's the strength of the lore of undeath. It's not the big monsters. It's not necessarily even the big units, but you do a couple of hard to kill stuff like the the small unit of crypt horrors a uh, cairn wraith or a banshee here and there uh the spirit host stuff like that and you're going to gum up so much of your opponent that if your main force is powerful in in any way you're going to be able to kind of pick apart what you want at, at your leisure so i definitely think that was a good showing for the lore of undeath power wise Again, didn't really do much to change my opinion upon of it uh, as far as the fun goes, because it literally was I cast two spells and held my uh, one of my main opponents or my opponent's main units underwater for the whole game. So, um, all in all, it was uh, it was good. But the MVP of the game were those freaking Noblars. Oh my god. <laughs> I think they recognize how much I love them, and, and they want to do me proud. And boys, you absolutely freaking did it this time. <laughs> the fact that I killed, what was it, six? Either two up or one up save knights with stand and shoot and dangerous terrain was absolutely mind-blowing. Um... Just the look on my opponent's face when he rolled those dice and, and saw how many died to the dangerous terrain. Um, but it's stuff like this, because this is not the first time something bizarre has happened with those uh, those Noblars. It's stuff like this that really make my opponents afraid of them. So, so if you guys have watched my battle reports before and you're wondering why the hell everyone backs away when the Noblars show up, it's shit like this <laughs> is why. Um, this is probably the second or third time that those Noblars have just absolutely demolished a unit that they had no business handling whatsoever. Um, 
They've done this before with these guys. They've done it before with a, a Bretonian lance that they basically just destroyed. And uh, they killed a small unit of trolls as well. Um, so it was really just kind of ridiculous um, seeing them continue to perform. But uh, I love my Noblars. I'm going to keep using them because, God, they put in the work. Um, speaking of people who did not put in the work... Um, Torga and her miscasting, good God, if this isn't a sign from the Maw that something's going wrong in her life, uh, I don't know what is, but uh, it, it was definitely just crazy to see five spells cast and three miscasts come out of it, um, and then to see her get sucked into the warp, that's that's just freaking fantastic, so it's definitely going to kind of change where we were going with the, the story, that's for certain, Um but uh, all in all, it was a fun game. It was definitely interesting to, to see how the Lore of Undeath works in a different army. Um, and, and I had a good time. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you have any comments, please put them in the comments section below. I do make it an effort to respond to them. Um, please like and subscribe uh, if you have not done so already. We very much appreciate getting that feedback and, and seeing that you guys appreciate the kind of uh, effort that, that I'm putting into to putting these together and to getting this content out on a weekly basis. Um, so we very much appreciate that. Um, other than that, we may not be playing this coming week. There's been some real-life stuff coming out, and uh, it, it may end up thinning us down for, for some content for a little bit but please stick with us uh if it wasn't borderline emergency stuff we obviously wouldn't be slacking off but uh it, it, real life does occasionally come and stomp you in the face every once in a while so uh please forgive us for that and we will see you on the next one thank you <laughs>